In the past few days, I've often heard you talk about the school or Banting as a community. What does a community mean to you? Well, a community, if you even just take the word, it means living together, many, many people in cooperative effort, making a little city. Um, community means that, uh, well, that everybody has an important part and everybody has a part to play and it works really well and it's a respectful situation and uh, it's just like one big family and we periodically have fights and mother always loved you best sometimes, you know, but we come together to problem solve and to move on and make the world a better place. Okay. What is your worst job nightmare? When I first started teaching, every time the school year would start, I would have this nightmare, and this is no joke. I would, this is the dream that I would have the night before, that I would go into my class, they would tell me that my room had been changed. This is the dream, okay? That they didn't tell me, this is the first day of class, I show up to the wrong classroom, I finally find my classroom, I open up my closet in my classroom, I go to take my coat off and hang it up and discover that I haven't gotten my clothes on. <laughs> That's, I would have that dream every fall, and that lasted for about 10 years. And then I finally stopped having that dream. Um, and I think it really meant that I was never quite sure if I was going to be good enough or if I was going to be able to carry the robe of the teacher very well. Like I would expose my weaknesses, so to speak. Anyway, dreams and I, we talk a lot with each other. They help me in life a lot. That's part of that right side of the brain, eh? Um, now my biggest nightmare, my biggest nightmare would be not having the physical strength to get the job done because this is a very physically demanding job. I was very surprised when I started out as a vice principal. It took me one year to get physically fit enough to be able to make it till the end of the day. It was very, very demanding because I'm not a young chicken, eh? But anyway, I have to be very careful. My, my biggest nightmare would be that that something happened where many, many people in our school would be harmed or something. You know, like that gas thing, that was a bit of a nightmare. That could have been really awful, but it wasn't. So that, that I, I, you know, we always live in fear that something really horrible like that would happen on our guard. Okay? Okay. Oh, that's a constant struggle. I have to think about that one more. Come back next year. <laughs> That's a gift, and I treat life as a gift, and hopefully respect other people's gifts. Sometimes I'm a little cranky because I'm tired, but you know how that goes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, as a student, I know a lot of people that have claimed that you help them, and some other students not so much. <laughs> but <laughs> most recently, a friend of mine was in a meeting with you and a teacher, and you suggested that she read a book. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. You ended up giving her a copy to read the next day. Is there any reason you do favors like this? And as I saw previously shadowing you, giving students coffee, among other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life, life is a big challenge, and any time that we can make a positive relationship or a connection that uh, inspires each other, it uh, doesn't matter how old we are. I mean, every time somebody walks in that door, they're my best teacher. I just hope I can be a good teacher for them. Um, I shared that book because we were exploring a common theme, and I thought it would be of interest to her. I found it really interesting, and I was trying to create a bridge um, that would enhance both of our lives as far as, you know, this is a really cool book and it's all about being a good human being. Let me know what parts you think are interesting and I'll let you know what I think was interesting. It's a dialogue. I appreciate that. Coffee because everybody needs a cup of coffee in the morning. That's all. Okay. And um, the book that I mentioned in the previous question was titled My Stroke of Insight, yes. which is about a woman who was a brain surgeon and lost the function of her left hemisphere yes. after a stroke. She mm -hmm. experiences the creative and feeling or emotional side of her right brain, which she explains made her feel unity with the world and well-being. Do you believe that using a more right hemisphere motivated education um, 
that students would become more successful or perhaps make them a different or better individual in our society. That's, I, that's the best part about that book because I, as an artist, I have, it, I live in a world that's the detailed world and that's not the right brain, the creative side. I think that's the side that's the creative, I can never remember left or right. Anyway, whatever side is the detail one, I, I'm forced to live in that world. I mean, we have skin, we have tables that have to get washed. You know, I have bookcases that need to be cleaned. I have to attend to those details, but really, I live mainly in the other side of my brain, which is the one that sees the whole picture of things. That demands imagination, and I was lucky enough to have that cultivated when I was a kid. And nature helps me with that. Uh, where I think our education system needs to move more towards helping us with that imagination and maintaining that. Everybody's born with a phenomenal imagination. Um, do I think it would help? I think so. Remember when I said everybody has a, a dominant ability? Mine happens to be that side. Um, but I think everybody has to then develop that underdeveloped side. I think adolescence is a time in life where we've already worked on our strengths and we're developing those strengths and now we're strong enough to look at the lesser strong side of ourselves and make it a tool. Do I think that we need to do more of that? Yep. Would it help us be better people? Yes. Would it help us be uh, more independent and whole? Yes. Would it help our communities be stronger? Yeah. Would it help the planet be healthier? Yeah. But. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, I do it spontaneously myself all the time, but I don't know how to explain that right now, okay? Okay. Who are some people that you've always looked up to? Well, I guess I would have to say both my parents, um, well actually all three of my parents, all three of whom have now passed away. Um, uh, Ursula Franklin. If there was a person I'd like to have tea with, it would be Ursula Franklin. She's a, a Canadian scientist, um, and uh, I just really think that she is really way, way cool. She's like 95 years old now. Jill Kirk Conway would be another person I would love to have tea with. Um, she used to be the president of the University of Toronto. Um, I would like to have lunch with Carl Jung, who's dead, but I think he would have been a really cool guy to know. Um, my dad, I carry him inside of me all the time. My mom, I carry her inside of me all the time. My other mom, I carry her inside of me all the time. Um, there are various other people in my life. I have this list of valiant people that I often add people to. Um, and uh, They're from all over the world, of people that I've worked with. Um, some not so famous, most of them not so famous, everyday people, so. Similar question, but is there anyone in your life as you've grown up and stuff that uh, you would say had a huge impact on you and on who you, you've become? Yeah, I think it would be my dad and my mom. They were pretty good. Papa. Um, um, so with all these responsibilities and everything we've talked <coughs> about, overall, do you really like your job? Actually, I do. There, <laughs> there isn't a day that I don't go home and take my coat off or whatever and say to myself, I am so lucky that I like my job. I can't imagine. I, I'm just a very lucky woman. Okay, and last question. What do you think is the most important aspect of youth education and something that you believe everyone should learn about? Relationship. Relationship. Um, how do we be our individual person? in a large group without being like everybody else and yet being able to fit within a social structure 
so that we can, you know, have some common laws so we can get along, we can, you know, take turns. Um, and how do we do that in a way that is respectful and kind, that carries all of our character traits? How do we restore a relationship when we break it? Um, how do we stay healthy in all different ways, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and socially? Okay. And is there anything else that you'd like to include about, say, or say about being vice principal at Dave Team? Well, I think I'd like to say that um, it's a very exciting job. I'm very lucky to be in it. Um, and every day is like Christmas. And a long time ago, I had a, a, gr a lovely dream about a Christmas tree, and my father was always a big, he used to do Santa Claus as a, he was the best Santa Claus for many, many years. Anyway, and so Christmas has always been a big thing for our family, and so I, I have this necklace that is a Christmas tree, and it's, it's true, when I have a hard day, I, I, I touch that Christmas tree, and remember, every day is a, is a gift. It's like Christmas, and every person that comes through this door is like another package to unwrap. And every time I'm with somebody, it's like, okay, what needs to be the gift here? Um, so it's a gift. And I'm on this side of the grass, and you're on this side of the grass, and tomorrow's a new day, and we're just so darn lucky to be in Canada, to be here at Banting. And truly, Banting's a very kind community. I'm hoping that as I get used to the job, I can be more kinder. Um, and that's the best part about being a VP. Everybody grows and moves on. Okay. And thanks for the time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.